Today, I'm gonna to give you a tour of the brains of my smart home, my network closet. If you're just starting out with your smart home, you don't necessarily need a network rack, but after you see this, you might want one. And if you wanna build one yourself, I'll walk you through all of the devices I have, I'll include all of the links at the end, and I'll do a breakdown of the cost. Let's hope my wife stops watching before then. So here we are in my basement. Now there's a lot going on in this room. We've got a home office, YouTube studio, home theater, and a home gym. But the coolest part of this room, I think, is under the stairs. So let me walk you over there. So I'm gonna show you every single part of this network rack, including this very nondescript black box right here. All right, so starting from the top, this is a Royal Racks 21U steel networking rack, and it comes in a couple of pieces that you then assemble, put together some screws here. Really easy, it's really great, it's on Amazon. I'll put a link in the description. But 21U just refers to the height and the number of spaces and or units that you can fit each one of these is a unit so there's 21 of those units so that's the rack itself i also on the rack have a couple of these shelves uh, these are ventilated shelves for mounting server components and i've got two of those they're really great nice and easy to mount anything you want and um, like with everything i talk about i'm going to put links to all of this in the description. So the other key part to any network, network network rack is cable management. One thing you gotta have, these Velcro cables are just uh, the best. And I could have had shorter uh, cables here, but this is what I had, so I use those. In the back, you'll actually see this component that is actually bolted on, it's a rack mounted component and it's called a StarTech cable manager and it's just great for routing ethernet cables as you can see in the back first thing i have is a cable matters patch panel and a patch panel is really where you bring in your ethernet lines and then patch them into the back here if you're going to be doing patching there's a couple of tools you need you need a punch down tool it may sound intimidating, but you watch a couple of videos, it's actually not that hard. And I really like doing ethernet patching. I know that sounds weird, but it's fun. Uh, so this is a patch panel, it allows me to bring everything in here. Then this terminates, and these lines go out to other areas within the network rack. So moving down, I have a TP-Link 24 port gigabit switch. That's this guy right here. And this is gigabit for now because that's the fastest internet that we have. If we move to 2.5 GB or even 10 GB, this can just be swapped out. But this switch is a unmanaged switch because it's actually downstream from our Eero router, which is upstairs. That's the only piece of equipment that isn't here, but I wanted the access point a little bit more centrally located in the house. So the gateway is upstairs and then it runs down uh, here. I think it's actually this line. Uh, into the switch itself and it's unmanaged so everything can kind of go everywhere. Just as a quick aside, you see all of these ethernet cables here. If you're gonna be building a smart home, you absolutely need to be running ethernet throughout your house. Now, I know there's a lot of great Wi-Fi based systems. We actually use a Wi-Fi mess, mesh system, but this is all through an ethernet backhaul. So each of the access points gets an ethernet cable that goes out to it and that sends the internet directly to the device itself and then from there out to the rest of the home. But it's the only way to ensure really fast throughput, lots of bandwidth, and especially with a smart home, you're gonna be consuming a lot of it, you're gonna have cameras, you're gonna have all sorts of equipment. Ethernet is the way to go and it'll future-proof your house for a long time to come. So get Cat6 or better uh, and you'll be happy. The next component here is an OR700 CyberPower uninterruptible power supply. And what that means is it's just a gigantic battery. This has 700 volt amps of capacity, which essentially means it can run everything in this rack for probably an hour and a half in case there is a blackout. 
Uh, this also helps with brownouts, making sure none of the electronics here go out if there is a power surge or something like that. This guy's awesome. Uh, just got it and it's been wonderful. We've had a couple of outages and it worked perfectly. Right below it is a power, uh, cyber power, uh, power delivery unit. So this also has a surge protector, which is a little bit redundant, but all of this, all of these systems power, send power out to different parts of the rack. There's like six ports on the front and there's another six ports on the back. It's a great, great rack mounted piece of hardware. Okay. Jumping down below, we've got a handful of smart home hubs. So we've got a ratio uh, for water that's actually for their uh, valves. So it's different than the hub itself. And then we've got the Lutron hub for all of our lights. And if I can peek in here, this is the Starling Home Hub. The Starling Home Hub is an amazing device. I'm gonna do a video on the whole on this at some point, but it connects all of my Nest and Google products to Home Assistant, which is which is great. Below that, I have a Synology uh, four bay disk station. I think it's a 923 plus, and next to it is a Mac Mini, and this Mac Mini is actually where Home Assistant lives. So I had I had one of these lying around. And it's an awesome little machine, way overpowered for home assistant, but works works like a dream. The Synology is, uh, it's got two drives in it right now, two four terabyte Western digital drives in it. And this is where we have a lot of media stored. All of our computer backups are stored here locally, but then also off site. This is also hooked up to our battery. So the under UPS, the uninterrupted rural power supply. And if that does actually run out of juice, this guy will shut down uh, nicely, which is amazing. So the Synology is a great system. If you wanted to have cameras and you wanted to be storing footage locally, this is a great way to do it. And it's also great for media and other things, computer backups, etc. So love that. This Mac mini is pretty old, but new Mac minis are just great machines. They are meant to be run in a headless way without a display. Uh, they're fa fairly low power, not as low power as a Raspberry Pi certainly, but um, it's a decently efficient machine and it runs Home Assistant in a virtual machine like a champ. Home Assistant is running on this Mac Mini, but the way that it actually communicates with radios is there's a USB cable that runs through the back. And then up here, this is where I have the Sky Connect dongle from Home Assistant. This runs both Thread and Zigbee networks. And I have it on a USB because it's great to get a little bit of distance from a lot of interference that you can kind of see would be happening down here. So it runs up there and generally has really great connectivity to the entire house. And we're two levels below where some of the Zigbee switches are and no issues at all. So this is our cable box. We have Fios and next to it is a, I believe this is a Mocha adapter. It brings in uh, internet and then turns that into coax, which then goes into the cable box. Frankly, it's not the best setup or system and we don't really use the cable box much at all, but it came with the internet, so we have to have it plugged in. But what's really cool is this nondescript box, black box here. This is actually the Samsung frame from upstairs. So I actually, I'll show you where the route is, but there's a fiber cable that runs from this all the way up to our upstairs TV. So theoretically, if there is a blackout, this can continue to power the TV through our rack mount. I don't have it hooked in just now, um, but if we really wanted to watch TV during a blackout, we totally could uh, using this guy. And it takes power in and then it sends all the imaging and power over the 
a fiber optic cable and I got an extra long one and it runs up through a 15 foot run, I think, all the way to the television upstairs. So all the ethernet and the Samsung frame, which you can kind of see here, run up through here all the way up to there. So this is where all the ethernet comes out and this conduit is actually what runs up about 15 feet to our TV upstairs. And it makes for a really nice, simple install upstairs. And the Bluetooth remote works great between floors. So we don't have to worry about sending infrared down here though we could because we've got plenty of room in this conduit. But ethernet is key. You will never regret running ethernet in your house. Now I've been monitoring temperatures in that room for the last two years. Because this is a basement and we live in a cooler climate, it's never exceeded 75 degrees. So I'm not worried about overheating, but at about 82 or 84, that's where you really need to worry. I do have an auxiliary fan that I can use to vent air out into the other part of the basement, but I haven't gotten around to installing it yet. So adding this all up, the rack itself was about $329. The two ventilation shelves were $90 total. Cable management, so that piece along the back side was 33 bucks. Patch cable is about $20. Patch panel is about $42. The TP-Link switch was $84. The backup power was $329. The Synology disk station with two four terabyte drives was about $899. And the Mac Mini, I got it for free, but probably $500, $600, bucks, depending on the specs that you use. It's certainly not cheap, but it's the brains of my smart home, and I didn't want to cut any corners. If you want to see the automations that my network rack is powering, check out this video where I share how I connected my sync with my smart lights. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the future.